a lot of religions have this, to train yourself not to care. So that if you were honest and had done the right thing and were at peace with yourself, nothing would happen should be able to upset you or distress you. So that if you happen to get on the wrong side of an emperor in a bad mood and get killed, you should be able to face that with equanimity. It was not your fault. You had not lost anything by it. It was very popular, and in some ways it suited the Romans quite well. Epicureanism was the really a, a quite different approach. It said, what we all want in life is to be happy, to, to, to be calm, to be happy, to enjoy things. Now that could easily, of course, descend into a wine room and so on live for the day. But that's not how the Epicureans regarded it. They said the real way to be happy. Now, if you want people to be nice and friendly to you, you must, of course, treat people justly and well. Um, if you want to be healthy, you must eat moderately and exercise. So although your goal was to be happy, obviously it amounted to the same in behavior you had to be very well to other people, and therefore your chances were. There's a great writer of Epicureanism who maintains, and this is quite interesting in Rome because it's not otherwise as strong, who says that the real, really upsetting thing that makes you miserable is, is fear, and in particular, fear of the gods. That he, what this writer is Confucius, who wrote a very famous and long poem called Matura about on the nature of things, what life's about, basically, which he said that the way to be happy is to throw away the gods and persuade yourself that none of them exist and that nothing like guilt or punishment or anything could exist because, he says, what the world really is is nothing to do with divine creation, it's atomic. It's the atomic theory. If you merely realize that life is merely an accretion of atoms swirling through the universe, you will be happy. It's a spectacular poem, but uh, those were the two most popular ones. Apart from that, there's the feeling often in Roman life that it doesn't touch one's deepest sentiments, emotions, fears, joys, really significant. And for this, there's a great growth which Christianity, I suppose, is the culmination of what are called mystery religions. Mystery religions. These are religions, nearly always coming from Asia Minor, but sometimes also from Asia, where the cult of the goddess Isis was one, where people's emotions are engaged instead. No Roman would have said he loved the gods. It would not have been a meaningful question meaningful thing to him. He would have said they are. It's not a matter of, you know, do I love a mountain? No. Um, mystery religions, where pe and also where people felt that they could in some way touch the God, participate with the God, and go away a changed or a better person as a result of it. Um, you do meet these even before in Greece, where the worship of the God Dionysus, who's the God largely over in the God of Wine, where certainly women used to have ceremonies where they got probably very drunk and possibly also ate mushrooms as well, and got into a state of extreme excitement and used to embrace and then tear apart young animals as a sort of a sacrifice. Some of these are unlovely, others are much more like celebrations where people feel an emotional context and they feel that they have as it were, washed their souls or, or had a, a bigger experience. They're very common. And of course, you can see how, and people, of course, if you went in the army, you would meet people from other places in the army that had one and would say, well, we worship the great mother and we do such and such. And quite a lot of religions have occasional times where you either intoxicate yourself or sing until your head spins or whatever. But the whole growth of these is, is an important part of religion, particularly among people. So if you, say, have come from Gaul and gone to Rome, this huge city, and just as people went to New York and still do go 
go to New York and think, I'm going to do anything. I don't care what I do. If I'm lucky, I might make some money, but my son's going to do well, my son's going to be a Roman citizen, and my son is going to, etc. But I don't care, I'm away from home, and it's miserable and it's dirty. You can imagine that you bring your religion on them with you, just as people, all migrants do, and so you get that, and, and the spread of these religions is quite common in all the cities and so forth, and people would have little shrines and others would hear about it, and particularly, I presume, if, if a person seemed to benefit from it, or if they prayed for something and something happened, this would, of course, encourage other people to feel that, oh, I better get into praying for ISIS, look what she did for so-and-so. That's the best overview I can give of Roman religion, which is a uh, and I think we'll finish. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you very much. I hope that gives a little picture of it, seeing if there's something you'd like to know more more. Anyhow, there's some notes here. Obviously, it's rather a big subject to deal with, but if... Yes, of course you know. Thank you. And now we'll use